All right, part two, unit weld, TIG 200P. Ugh. All right, so what I was saying is this is fun. And I fucked up earlier and accidentally cut this all off. Actually, this is the second time recording it. So to get this guy on here, see, this is why I want it. Because you just do that. And you can do this, and it's it. That's it. That's it. Hand tight. She doesn't leak. Anyways, to get that to happen, you have to pull this end of the hose out. But first, you need to dissect your TIG torch. Five screws. Okay. Your next step after your five screws is going to be pulling this section out. This piece of rubber right here is not part of this. So you're going to slide this guy as far down here as possible. Probably to right here. Then you're going to take your little utility knife or pocket knife or jack knife and you're going to score this stuff and slice this. You get that off. Then you can see here you got your hex and your other hex. You unscrew these two guys. That's the end of your hose. Male end is on this end, obviously. Female end is up here. So then you're going to unscrew this guy here from the ball. You can see it attaches right here. It's screwed. It's not hard. It comes right off. You slide that down over the jacket. You slide the ball down. And... You'll peel off all of this stuff. Slide this guy off. Put him on the ground in line. Make, make a line of things. Put your parts in a row if you have to. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this ball, slide it up, and you're going to take this little switch panel here, and you're going to gu guide him through, and then you're going to guide your hose through. It may be where you can't do it because you got too much jacket in the way, whatever. Either or. Get that guy through. These two will fit through this. And then once that struggle is over, you're good. Because this guy, he only slides off of the hose. So that, that's no fight. Then this guy, take him off. Then all you do is on this hose, on this end of the hose, you got to either tie a rope or string of some sorts. Um... You could take another hose. I don't care what you do. I ended up using like one eighth inch aircraft wire. I split it open, wrapped it up as far to uh, probably to about here. And then I taped it, electrical tape all the way around. And then a buddy came over and the two of us, I went upstairs up there and we, uh, he pulled this guy out all the way, all the way till it was out. Then I still had my cable running through into here well into the end of this jacket where this guy comes out once you got your gray hose all the way out put this guy on and make sure you put him in the correct way because it sucks when you do it twice as um i forget your name starts with a d but the first guy that commented on the video yes i will show uh at some point Maybe tomorrow, when I get time, a review on that. But when I did the jacketing for that, for the torch, or the plasma torch, same thing. I got three-quarters way through, and I went, oh, shit, it was backwards. So it's no fun doing it by yourself, especially with this. This is like uh, like 13 feet long for a TIG torch, dude. This thing is badass. Large, but the length is great. So, anyways, slide this all back in. This just fits in there. There's no fanciness. Put your screws in. Um, I ended up using the only thing I could find at my buddy at his house and at my house was this shit here. It's T and B. I don't know the brand. Uh, quarter inch to three quarter, not quite quarter, but uh, that's the heat shrink that we put on. This is the replacement. Uh, this stuff is about a th little under sixteenth thickness right now, and when you heat it, the bitch gets thicker. So just be aware, I ended up having to shave off uh, 
the end of the, this end here so I could slide this piece of rubber back on. Whatever shit happens, it still worked. I didn't cut through the coating anyway. Uh, oh, and a good thing, before you slide this rubber back up, because after you get that on the hose and then heat shrink, make sure you do it in the right, right order. Um, put, uh, I ended up using for a lubricant, so a drop, less than a drop of uh, synthetic gear oil till this stuff was shiny and then slid this piece of rubber on. And lastly, after you get this all put together, this guy screwed back on nice and tight, your strain relief in place, uh, the ball in there, this is gonna start to get screwed together. Line up your seams, because your TIG torch is going to look awful funny if it's crooked. Um, anyways, all right, let me get to the next part. i got to put this guy back together. You don't need to see that. Okay, now, all right, uh, the user manual <laughs> for the TIG 200P, right? Uh, there is quite literally horse shit in here. This is... This is not really don't 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 pay too much attention to it. Um, it it's not going to help you out. Uh, that's a funny looking machine. Uh, no. Okay. So obviously, oh look, it's a uh, it's not the same one. Not the same one. Um, lift tig. No, this isn't a lift tig. Uh, oh, ooh, there's a picture of. What we should be looking at and having instructions for. Uh, no. Nope, because that's all you get. Um, and then it's operational BS. There's a wiring diagram. I don't know if that's 100% accurate. Although they say it is. It's right there. Take 200p. Daily check. Troubleshooting. And, well... Okay, I don't have specifically any TIG rod. I got some MIG welding wire. I got some couple of 6018 uh, arc welding electrodes that I kind of uh, cleaned and, excuse me, uh, just sanded and lightly wire wheeled uh, just to say, and eh, now it's solid metal. It's three, these are 330 seconds, I believe. Um, Actually, I think they're one-eighths. Uh, yeah, it's probably one-eighth. Maybe bigger, but whatever. Who cares? Oh, no, 330, they're definitely three, they're not 330 seconds. Those got to be a little bigger than that. This is 330 seconds. I was at Tractor Supply. It's for torch welding, but uh, I picked it up. Figure, what the hell, why not? Um, And... So I'll mess with that, try it out. Um, what else? Uh, what else? What else? What else did I do? I guess that's about it. So uh, we we played around with it. Um, not gonna lie. So this here, what you see in front of you, is my first dagger ever attempt at TIG welding without this one. This was just playing with it after it did the pilot arc that's why there's no no filler in it um this was with the wire from the mig welder this was with the mig welder this was this guy here um And that was technically my first ever TIG weld. Uh, as you can see, I started off lumpy. I screwed up. I dipped it in. Um, I finished up. Uh, and then I dipped it in again over here. And then I just gave up. Now, afterwards, while that chunk was still attached, something else happened here. I went and just did a, uh, an arc to just to try and set the uh, the machine up again and i don't know i made this pretty cool looking oh can i zoom in pretty cool looking badass i shake like i got parkinson's blame it on the meds and uh yeah this shit here so i don't know what happened there cleaned it off again um 
reground, stuck it all together. That was yesterday. We were exhausted. I was falling asleep standing here. Um, and I gave up. So for today, uh, with the bits and stuff that I had to do, I didn't get a chance to do this. I'm doing it now. I don't even know what time it is. It's got to be around midnight. But anyways, all right, so... Let me turn this guy on. She lights up. Uh, the instructions really do suck. So, uh, arc welding. This is pretty simple. Um, you got your hot start. I got that figured out. Then it goes to your arc force, welding current, and those are your only three options. So. So a hot start, I guess, would be what your amps are that it gives you, up to 50. Um, or it could be zero. So it could be completely dead until you some sort of minuscule voltage goes on, I guess. I don't know. So we'll click that to zero. Arc force. Oh, stand, sit still. Click that starts blinking tells you your amps um maybe that's your pilot arc for arc welding i guess i don't know and then it says it'll go up to 200 because that that's all the way so and yeah this is a push to select and this is your push to select other shit uh for up here so but yeah so that's the 200 uh, next button, next press is the 2T in TIG. So 2T is uh, you click and hold thing. So pre-flow time, zero all the way. Oh, it does uh, go to five. So, so let's say uh, my my brain says. I don't know nothing about it so then your next thing is your welding current so you click and now you can adjust that this will go to 200 and it goes as low as 10 so since the rod is like 16th I wouldn't go too high so I say 50 and then you got your down slope seconds All the way up to 10 seconds. That's, uh, that's probably okay. Ooh. Come on, bitch. Down slope, crater. Uh, you can adjust your amperage as it does the crater. Wow. Shit. And then your post time. 10 seconds down to one second and then you have off so you can actually shut the machine off or shut something off I don't know I you know what while we're here ground clamps hooked up gas is on I'm gonna take this thing here I'm slide it over here not make any contact, but I'll squeeze the old trigomotron and see what happens. So she's live. Interesting. All right, so that's not doing anything. That's 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 cool. So maybe it's latching. I don't know. Um, hmm. So it's not really off. All right, so forty. Now this starts up and changes everything. So oh, and I do not know how to get to a pulse. 
And I don't know if that's just a uh, marketing pulse. So you got your start current up here. Your upslope welding current, which should be normal. See, it doesn't go to base current. If you were to have a pulse, right? Wouldn't that make sense? Now you go back to 4T. Nothing. Oh, wait a minute. I just found it. Off. <laughs> That's what that do. All right, so now on so oh, I just figured something out anyways oh uh, great twenty amps welding current forty amps interesting so oh, that's cool um I'm gonna mess with it off camera it does work it's a pretty cool little machine but I don't have a lot of time left here so I will just pause this guy out and I don't want to burn up my phone's camera because my wife will kill me so anyways let me do something here try to make some metal stick to metal and I'll get back to you hold please and we'll return to this um all right, let me zoom you out so I made some attempts, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of MIG wire. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. This is just tracing with the, uh, the electrical thing. Um, man, this thing can spark up quite an arc. Um, if you move away when this thing is still running as if you were, you know, just pulling away so let's say you were contact you were making your weld making your weld making your weld you have your normal arc you pull away i gotta say it's a good one inch long high high voltage arc that'll start from you know let's say, uh, right about yeah about an inch inch and a half and then you can bring down and then right around here you'll start to catch your regular arc and you could drag your arc out probably about that far so i don't know an inch but yeah, inch and a half, it's like zap zap. And you got it. But um This is me fucking around with stuff. Uh I don't remember what I used here, so I can't really help you out. Like I said, uh other than that, 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 the original three. It's my first time ever TIG welding. You'll see the story here. Um Alright, so quarter inch plate on uh, quarter inch plate I tacked it here tacked it here and then tried to well and uh, I started off and then I would get this little sputter spatter here and then same thing here and then I said oh fuck it I'll take one of these rods and I'll just lay it down the side and I'll run over it well that's what I got I laid it off the side that way with the tip started here and and that's basically what happened. The, the arc walked from here to here, and it stayed on this side. I'm not a specialist, so this is...